Okay guys, we're, this is Ben here with Metal RC. And today we have on the bench the Team Associated Pro 4 that just come out this uh, last summer in 2021. And this has been a really good, reliable truck. And we're gonna do an upgrade video on it today. Team Associated Pro 4 2021 edition, along with the uh, rival MT-10 monster truck. So. This video applies to both vehicles, process is exactly the same, uses the same part numbers. Metal drive shaft upgrade. And the reason I'm doing this is because I have a project coming up with this truck I want to do in the future, and probably in a couple videos. And I'm going to need the heavy duty drive shafts and I kind of want to test them and see how they last. I have not broke any of the plastic drive shafts, I think. For the short course truck they hold up really well i'm sure that some people have maybe run into issues with them but I haven't broke any but i think it's time to do the video on them to get them installed um, you need 25847 for the fronts and 25848 for the rears now they both say front on them but this one says f this one says r that's the way to differentiate the two um, <coughs> And these particular drive shafts, the way that they go on, you have to do quite a bit of disassembly to get them in. You get the CV shafts, they're really nice, they feel really good. They're already pre-assembled, but I would, we're going to go through and uh, re-lock tight the set screw, make sure everything's good there. The reason that these get a little complicated as far as installation goes is we have to tear the diffs completely out. Drain the oil out of them, replace these cups, put them all back together, fill them all back up with fluid, and that's where the drive shaft uh, conversion takes a little bit of time. So we're going to go through that step by step. First step is, is we removed all the wheels from all four corners, got it up on our workstation, um, so it's easier to work on and maneuver around. Uh, second thing you're going to want to do is remove the hex hubs, um, get a little screwdriver, or something behind the hex and wiggle the hex off pop out your pin make sure you don't lose the pin and then the next thing we need to do is we're going to remove the shocks and just get them out of the way because so that we can get into the diff and then we're also going to remove the bumper so we need to remove these two screws here and these three screws here. Okay, the next step is, is we need to Remove the two screws and pop off one end of your sway bar off of one side. Just loosen these, you can leave them screwed in. Swivel it out of the way. Uh, next step is, is there's two screws in here. So you'll see there's a set of four screws. You'll need to take out the lower one on both sides and then that will re remove the diff case. And get that out of the way. Now we can get right in there to the diff and kind of unlace your uh, wires and just get them out of the way. You don't need to completely take the wiring out. And then you can pull the diff out like that. That's the part we're going to be working on. Hex side, there's this little tiny washer here. Make sure you put that to the side washer and bearing so now we've removed that side go ahead and remove the other side also the same way just push it through this one the bearing came right off so it's still in the knuckle and don't forget about the washer okay we got the drive shafts out we got the diff out so one thing we want to do while we're in here go ahead and inspect the gears I don't see any cupping or anywhere on the pinion gear yeah, so the gears look good. I don't see any signs of skipping 
or any signs of premature wear. I mean, I can see where we've got a little bit of a break in um, from the wear side, but I don't see anything that needs to be replaced or addressed. Looks like the drivetrain is holding up really well. Next step is, is we need to remove the drive shafts off the diff. And in order to remove the drive shafts off the diff, you need a 1.5 millimeter. Undo the set screw and it's actually a set pin. You need to pull that out and throw it to the side. That is not reused in the new kit. And then you just uh, pull that drive shaft off. Those drive shafts are still good. The bearings can stay right where they're at. There's no, no reason to remove the bearings. Got to remove four 1.5 screws out of the diff. Be careful, they're very small. So make sure you have a good bit that gets a good grip. You don't want to strip these out. They will be a nightmare to get out. Okay, we got the diff apart. I do want to note these screws be very careful, make sure you have a bit that fits really nice and snug. These are 1.5s, but they kind of fit a little weird. I have a nice wrench, and it's still having a hard time biting even if I pressed it in. So be careful you don't strip these putting them in or taking them out. Take your time and go nice and slow. Don't use your power driver on these four screws, putting them in or taking them out. Next thing we're going to do is... We pulled them apart. I cleaned up the grease on the outside somewhat. And then I'm just going to inspect the gears, make sure everything looks good. And the gears look flawless. I don't see metal flaking. So that's really good to know that they got a good gear set up. I don't see anything wrong with any of the gears inside. So that's a good sign. So we're going to let it sit upside down and drain for a minute. Everything looks pretty good. So what you need to do is drop these gears out. If you can leave them all put together like this, that's better. Don't lose any of the washers that are on the outside edges of those gears. Also, there's a washer on this gear, don't lose that. And don't forget about your seal gear. So we're doing, we gotta take out, open the front drive shafts. And the fronts are 25847 metal drive shaft F. And I need to separate this gear from there. Remove the pin. And then the washer. And take a do you take and put the drive one of the out drives through the diff cup. Install the outdrive O-ring. Put the washer on like that. A little wrench here, and we're going to push down. That's what that did is push the O-ring down into its slot. You're going to take the pin. If you have a pair of needle nose, curved needle nose, to barely grab the tip of that pin. And I have to try to weasel it in this way. So it's a little snug, it's supposed to be that way. That means the O-ring is making a good seal. And I wanna take that pin and make sure it's pushed in evenly on both sides, not pressed off to one side of the next. Then you're gonna plop that gear down on there. Not like that. And then you just spin it till it slots down. So now the gear's in place, and this side is ready to go. And then you can take your gears, slide them down in there. They're all set. Now we need to do this side. So we're going to pop this out. Take off the O-ring. I take the other side, it goes through this way, 
o-ring the o-ring wants to push back it's kind of a kind of a bear okay we got this one so you got to press down really tight this washer here is to hold the seal in place you know and uh, it, to make it seal real good so you have to put a lot of force to press down to get it to fit through so you get the pin in there evenly it's like the other side pop the gear back on and now we're ready to fill it back with fluid Okay, we got the diff put back together. Um, take your time with the screws, lightly tighten them crisscross pattern like this until they're snug and you feel like they're up tight against the thing. <clears throat> but be careful not to strip them out. I'm gonna keep saying that because these screws are dainty and to get them out, you'd have to grind a flat spot in them and use a screwdriver. And if that doesn't work, you might have to buy a whole new a whole new diff so just take your time 1.5 millimeter to get those I put 30,000 this is the front I already got a hundred thousand in the center we're gonna do 10,000 rear seems to work pretty good in the rival MT10 so that's what we're sticking with here um, <clears throat> next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna pull this set screw out and we're gonna Loctite it with red Loctite. Okay, so there definitely is not any Loctite on those set screws, so do not run these drive shafts without Loctiting the set screw. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll be regretting that one. I'm gonna suggest using red Loctite on them. These are something that you do not want to come out and you need a good Loctite. Blue Loctite works pretty well in most cases that these things are spinning extremely fast a lot of vibration so you want to make sure they're really locked into place and they're not going to come loose on you while you're driving make sure your pin slid on me is in the center again 1.5 millimeter on the on the drive shafts Make sure you check all of them. Okay, next thing is we're going to take and slide the drive shafts into the hubs and the bearings. Like so. Okay, put your diff in in the correct direction. Should be ring gear on that side. Slot your pins, your drive shafts in like that. Slide that into place. Don't forget to uh, put some grease. Okay, now that we've greased the gears up, let's go ahead and slide the diff cap back on. like that put the sway bar back in place okay next thing is we're gonna put the bumper back on Get this one on the front, don't forget. Okay, you can use these pins or the old pins. They should still fit the same. Don't forget to put your, your little hex washer on first. Pin. And your hex, make sure it lines up with the pin. 
and the pins even. There we go. Repeat that to the other side. So we're gonna install the shocks, the other hex, finish up the front, the front will be done, and then we'll do the rear. Okay, the rear is very similar, but you don't have to take off, an, off as many, many parts. You don't need to remove the shocks on the rear. You gotta remove these two screws for the, for the bumper. Gonna remove this screw under here. Hold the bumper up out of the way. Best you can. Wish I had a bigger workbench so I could give you a better view, but it is what it is. Sway bar screws. Get the sway bar out of the way. Okay, so we got it to this point. You're just gonna repeat the process for the rear as you did the front. Pop the hexes, pull the pins. Don't forget to save the shims. With the diff, same as you did. Don't forget to inspect your gears. Just kind of go over everything, make sure everything looks good. The rear does end up getting more wear than the front. Okay guys, so there it is, we got it all done. This process is the same for the Team Associated Rival MT-10 monster truck. Drivetrains are exactly the same. So same process, um, diffs are the same, uh, part numbers are the same. So if you have a monster truck or the Pro 4, either one, this video applies to both. Please like, subscribe, and share. I got some more videos coming on this kit. Thank you very much.